Hello guys, and welcome to another episode of Sam's Motoring Machine. And today, as you may have guessed, I've got something a little bit different to show you guys than the normal Range Rover spannering. Now, apart from being a Land Rover nerd and a Range Rover nerd, you may have guessed I'm also a bit of a nerd nerd. That is to say, I've got quite a few hobbies that some of you guys might regard as being a bit geeky. Now, it's my mission today to try and convince you that just one of my hobbies, 3D printing, is extremely useful, and to try and convert some of you naysayers to being geeks like me. So, to that end, this is what I have to show you, and inside this box is the Anycubic Cobra Neo, which might be the best beginner-friendly 3D printer on the market, so it's perfect for me to show you guys in this video. So I've got to say thanks first of all to Anycubic for sending this out to me, they also sent a couple of rolls of filament, which we'll get to shortly, uh, but basically this has a really nice feature set and price as well, so the price is very, very low on this. We'll get to all that in a bit, um, but basically you'll be very surprised as to how little of an outlay you can uh, spend basically to get into 3D printing and have yourself a factory at home basically. So let's unbox it. So with this type of printer there is some assembly required. Not very much I have to say as any cubic themselves actually state you can build this thing and have it running in 10 minutes. So I thought what would be quite fun to do is if I put a timer on, see just how long it takes me to go from box to fully working 3D printer. So let's do that now. So I'm going to include unboxing it from the box it was shipped to me in, in the 10 minutes setup time. So let's start the timer and crack on. So straight in on top. I'm going to knock my phone off there. We've got a little bit a reel of PLA, 10 meters there. There's a little trial. Luckily, I've got two boxes that they also sent me. We've got an instruction manual here as well. Probably not going to need that. He lies. And then we'll get rid of this first layer of foam. And hopefully, you guys can see there. That is the actual frame and main uprights of the printer there straight away. That looks awesome. So here is our main upright. So this is where they save the time, is that most of it's kind of pre-assembled for you already. When I built this guy, the old Ender 3, a lot of that had to be done by hand. So then what else have we got? This looks to be our build plate and the lower part of the frame. So let's make some space. Yeah, Most disorganized unboxing ever. So then next, we need to find our bolts, which I'm guessing are going to be in here. Power lead, SD card, screws, washers, bolts, more bolts, USB stick, Allen keys, spanners, wire cutters, what you can use for cutting your, uh, your filament, and a nozzle unblocker. So, pretty decent little tool kit that you get there. So I'm going to spin this round so it's facing you guys at the front. And the first thing we're going to do now is take our uprights, which is here, which is all pre-assembled very nicely, uh, making sure we get this the right way around. So it's going to be that way with the uh, extruder mountings on the front. And this is basically just going to sit onto our extrusion here. It should fit into that pretty nicely. And then we've got two M5 by 45s and two M5 by 25s. It lines up very nicely. Take our little dinky Allen keys here that they supplied. You could use your own tools to speed this up a good way. I'm just using the ones they supplied just to kind of prove a point really. So next we're going to install our x-axis X -axis limit switch, which is this guy here. That's going to be installed up here. So we're going to lower the, uh, the gantry down a bit here. I think that's supposed to go like that. Pop the screw back in. So next we'll install probably the most important part of the printer, which is the print head itself. This is a really chunky looking thing, especially compared to the old Ender 3 that I've got there. So I think we've probably gone over our 10 minutes 
but not by much. There's not that much more to do on this printer. We've got to tidy up the wiring a little bit, connect a few cables, put the screen on, and we'll have a functioning printer. So, I mean, maybe 10 minutes if you weren't filming and faffing around. It took me a damn sight longer to build the Ender 3 there, let me tell you, a few years ago. I'm going to plug in our X axis stepper motor here. We're obviously going to need to plug in the Y down here. Let's pin that around so you guys can see that. This is our, sorry, Z uh, step motor here. Just plug that guy in. And there's also a limit switch to plug in over here. So that, once you get the screen on, is gonna be a fully functioning 3D printer in about 15 minutes. So not the 10 minutes that they advertise, but, but maybe I'm not the quickest 3D printer builder in the Wild West. Of Ireland. Pretty much a complete 3D printer in about 15 16 minutes. That's pretty awesome. Obviously, there's a bit of cable tidying that we can still do just to tidy up a little bit. We can throw on our, uh, our filament holder up here. I'm just going to sit something like that or like that, which one of the two. But there you go. That's how easy it is to build a 3D printer. Right. So before we can start printing, there's a couple more things we need to do. Obviously, we need to put our uh, filament holder on there and the reel. Um, but we also need to make sure that all of the, um, the runners that run in these extrusions, basically that's the way that these parts can move around. So you have these, uh, basically these wheels that run in the, the V slots on the extrusions, which means basically need to make sure that those are all set to the correct tightness. Now they're not far off, it'll probably print fine as it is, but I just noticed that the uh, the bed could do with a little bit of tightening up here, there's a little bit of movement in that. I'll try and show that on camera in a minute. Uh, and also the uh, the gantry here uh, could also do with a slight tighten up on this end, there's a little bit of movement there. But overall, not too bad, and they actually supply you the spanners that you need for that job just here. So what I'm doing here is I'm just notching up the tension on the uh, adjuster wheel there whilst feeling the tightness of the wheel on the opposite side. So you want to be able to turn the wheels by hand still, but you don't want them to be completely loose. So just a little bit of resistance is needed to get the correct tension on those V-slot wheels. Uh, European plug. I think because I'm in Ireland, they assumed I'd be on a European plug, but as everybody knows, we're on bloody English plugs here. Uh. And there we go. One fully functional, I think, 3D printer. Really, really easy to build, really fun to build actually. Went together really, really nicely. And the overall look and feel of this thing is awesome. Comparing it to my Ender 3 over here, which is a few years old now, admittedly, this thing looks like a proper finished consumer product as opposed to some old bits of aluminium extrusion that have been botched together. This thing looks really good. So there we go. This is our nice little display here. Uh, it's not touchscreen on the uh, Cobra Neo. They have uh, saved a bit of money by taking that touchscreen away and given you this uh, control knob, which is perfectly fine. The screen itself is nice and clear. So I think the first thing we're going to try and do is make use of the leveling. So one of the really nice features on the Cobra Neo is the auto bed leveling. And let me tell you, when I started getting into 3D printing with the uh, Ender 3 back there, back in about 2019, 2020, I would have killed for bed leveling built into my printer. This is a feature that used to be really high up on the uh, the scale of 3D printers. It would only be really found in commercial and industrial printers. But now companies like Anycubic have brought it right down into the entry level machines like this. And it really, let me tell you, takes a lot of the pain out of trying to get your, your bed level here to, uh, to get your prints to stick to the bed properly, etc. So it's homing itself. And this is where we get to listen to the uh, stepper motors of the machine for the first time. So far, it's sounding really quiet, moving very smoothly, so it's always nice to see. I'll put my mic nearby to it so you guys can hear the noise it's making. Basically silent. The, the noisiest part on it is the fan that's on the power supply underneath there, so pretty good. So the machine's honed itself there. What it's doing now is it's heating up the extruder, which is the, uh, the bit on the end of the nozzle there, and the bed up to a predetermined temperature. So it's getting up to 60 degrees on the bed and 120 on the nozzle, um, just so that when it levels the bed, it's me measuring it at its expanded state. So obviously, as you, know, you guys know, when the, uh, the bed 
and the metals in the extruder heat up, everything's going to change shape slightly. So it's heating it up before it does the leveling. So it looks like it's just about finished heating itself up and it's going to start auto leveling using that inductive probe that's attached to the print head here. So we go, it's basically just lowering the head down to the bed to within a certain distance, taking a reading from that inductive probe. And it basically is going to use that information to build a mesh um, data table showing at which points the bed is up or down or tilted or slanted. And then once it's got that, it can basically use that data to adjust the height of the nozzle as it's printing to make sure that your first layer of filament sticks down perfectly every time. So before we can start printing cool parts for our Land Rovers or little model owls as the case may be, there's one more step we need to do and that's to set the Z off offset on this machine. So basically what that's going to do is tell the printer how far away the nozzle is from the bed. So from the main screen I'm going to go into move axis, go to home and home all just to start us off. What that'll do is it'll move all the axes back to their uh, respective switches so it knows the exact position of the print head here. Right, so once we've done that, we're going to come to move X and we're going to basically move the print head across a little bit by bit until it's basically somewhere near the middle of the bed on the X axis. So probably somewhere around there. Same again on the y-axis. I'm going to bring this forwards. Until we are dead in the middle of the bed pretty much. So somewhere there. So next we'll come into Z and we're going to lower this down until it says zero. So that's zero there now. So now we've got that positioned, we'll head into menu, leveling, Z offset, and from here, this is where we're going to start to use our paper. So we're going to feed the paper underneath the print nozzle basically, and currently I can feel that that's way too high. So what we're going to do is we're going to gradually lower the print head down in increments of 0 0.02 millimeters until we start to feel that the nozzle's kind of pressing on that paper as I'm moving it. So we go about minus 0.72 millimeters, that's where my printer feels about right on the leveling, on the uh, Z offset, sorry. So it'll be a bit different on yours depending on the slight tolerances in the parts, but this is a really important step to make sure that our first layer goes down perfectly. So now we've done that, we can pop in our sample SD card here that any cubic include with every printer. Print from SD card, and then we're going to print this test piece they have here. We'll set up a little uh, time lapse for you guys so you can see what it does. So as you can tell by my drastic sudden change in appearance, it's now been a few weeks since I filmed that initial assembly video of the Anycubic Cobra here. Um, and in those few weeks, it's been pretty much printing non-stop, as you can tell by my little assortment of, uh, of 3D prints here. And overall, I have to say, I'm pretty impressed by the capabilities of this little machine over here. As you guys can see, I've been putting it through its paces, 
trying to print as many different types of objects and materials as I possibly can, including a castle pencil holder and a Terminator T-800 head. Very nice. And I even went as far as printing an object that every man cave needs, a miniature version of Patrick Stewart's head. Now these type of items are a great example of why you don't need to be a 3D designer, a CAD designer, to actually use a 3D printer effectively, because all of these designs are actually found on the web, ready for you to download, totally free. I'll leave a link to Thingiverse down below and I encourage you guys to go and check it out because there are literally hundreds of thousands of items on there for you to print for any kind of purpose that you can imagine. And Thingiverse is actually the place where I found these, which are actually our first Land Rover related 3D prints. Now if I show you a close up of these items, it might give you a bit of a clue as to what they're for. This one here says rear standard and this one here says front low. So what could those be for? Well, those of you that watch the channel will know that one of my projects is a P38 Range Rover, which is a second generation Range Rover from about the year 1998. Now the P38, like a lot of Range Rovers, has air suspension, electronically controlled on all four corners, uh, and from time to time it does actually need to be calibrated. Well, according to the Land Rover Workshop Manual, the service procedure for calibrating the suspension involves using some levelling blocks, which are actually a special tool that Land Rover would sell you for quite an extortionate price, that basically are just some blocks of material that set the body height from the axle height to a certain level. So somebody on the internet had the bright idea that they'd be able to model and 3D print the blocks corresponding to the four uh, ride heights of the P38 and the front and rear uh, axle ride heights. And then they put the file onto Thingiverse, I downloaded it, and I've been printing these out over the last couple of days. Now these are printed in a material called PLA, which is basically the standard material that uh, 3D printing uses. Um, and I printed them about 50% infill, so around 50% of the interior is hollow. Um, and I printed them with a very thick sidewall, as you guys might be able to see there from a close-up. Um, so these calibration blocks have actually got to bear the full weight of the Range Rover body minus the axles and wheels, uh, which is probably going to be around two tons. So divide that by four corners, and basically each one of these blocks has got to be supporting 500 kilos. So this is going to be quite an extreme test of the compressive strength of this material, of PLA. Um, as I say, I've printed them fairly stoutly, they're 50% infill, and they've got a very thick outer wall here. Um, but it's going to be really interesting to see if these things can take the weight of a two-ton SUV. Now obviously I would never use these as a safety related device, I'm not going to put myself anywhere near the underside of that vehicle whilst we're calibrating, um, but I'm pretty confident these are actually going to be able to support the weight of the Range Rover no problem at all. This stuff, PLA, particularly in compression, is extremely strong. So in a future video we're going to be putting these things to the test, we're going to be finding out basically if they're man enough to take the weight of a full fat Range Rover.